My guest today is, uh, you've already met him if you've been watching a little bit of the show, but my guest today is Bry Face. He's a Vancouver-based musician, and he's also putting together live events like the upcoming Overflow concert that's happening on October 22nd here in Vancouver. And uh, you are a musician that works with electronic gadgets, and you create chip music and chip tunes. What, right. what, uh, well, for those that don't know, I'm pretty sure most of our audience knows exactly what it is or has some idea of what it is. How do you define what chip music is or chip tunes are? Uh, the shortest way I can describe it is that uh, chip tunes are music made with or inspired by um, the sound chips of old vintage gaming hardware. Awesome. So things like the Game Boy, the NES, the Sega Genesis, uh, or Mega Drive, for those of you who are not, <laughs> not North Americans. Um, yeah, and just old platforms, and then we basically use those sound chips to create mu new music. And so every one of those old consoles is like an instrument. It's got its own sound and its own style. And can you, as as a consumer of this stuff and as a uh, a creator of this stuff, can you tell the difference between a a piece of tune, a piece of music composed on the Sega Genesis compared to something composed on the NES? Yeah, it's really interesting because different hardware manufacturers for video game companies, they have their own like proprietary ways of making this hardware. Yeah. So that actually comes through in the making of the sound chips, uh, just all the sound hardware that they incorporate into the game machines. When did this all start to come alive? Like when, when did people start doing this? Do you know? Um, you, some could say... It started as early as like the mid or early 90s mm -hmm. with uh, computer music that tried to emulate the sound uh, of these older platforms. Um, otherwise, uh, I guess a few years into the late 90s, people started figuring out how to reverse engineer um, how to program uh, for these old platforms. And so what they, they would end up doing is that they would make uh, programs that would actually let you write music from scratch right in the hardware. So once people caught wind of this, they were like, oh, this is actually a really cool way to make music. And so it kind of caught on from there, uh, particularly in the mid-2000s. And how did you discover it? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, uh, about seven or eight years ago, I went to a, uh, something called a Blip Festival, which was this basically like a Woodstock, but for chiptunes. Cool. Uh, and this was based in New York <laughs> that had like three days of artists from around the world playing all sorts of different times, kinds of chip music. And so I was there and I was just blown away by the sheer amount of the talent on display. And that inspired me to try it out for myself. That is a long way to go. Did you know you were going to that concert while you were, or did you just happen to be in New York and you got pulled into this thing? Or were you going there for the, the Blip yeah. Festival? Well, the online communities uh, surrounding Chiptune had existed for quite a while. Yeah. And so that's kind of the means through by which to which I found out about these uh, festivals. Okay. So uh, luckily that meant that when I went there, there were actually people that I had met uh, in real life for the first time that I had known for like a couple of years at least. Oh, that's so, so cool. So that was great. So when you first heard chip music, it was like, that's for you? Like you were a fan immediately and you got the groove and you understood the art of it? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of aspects to it. I think uh, one is obviously the nostalgia factor. Sure. Most of us grew up playing games and so there's a bit of that audio DNA, and that's part of why we like it so much. Yep. Uh, for me, I like the idea of music in the abstract, and how um, if, if you could enjoy a piece of music, but it didn't have the benefit of being played by a piano or a violin. Right. So there's a sense of like purity to it that really draws me to it because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, like music can be just be enjoyed. It's not because of how expensive the instrument is. Like you don't need, you know, a $10,000 grand piano to enjoy music for its merits. Yeah, there is a, there's a beautiful simplicity, right? And when you hear some of the, those old melodies, there's like this instant emotional kind of jump backwards, I yeah. guess. And it makes you really appreciate the artistry through which the original composers of some of her favorite games yeah. went to great lengths to try and impact as much musical information into like four kilobytes of data that they had for their sound budget for their games. Was there a composer from back in the day that, that just blew with Koji Kondo or? Yeah, Koji yeah. Kondo is yeah. one, creator of the, the Mario music. Sure, uh, genius, yeah. total genius. Uh, and the, Zelda and mil millions of Nelda, uh, Nintendo themes oh yeah, that we lots know. Lots of yeah. Japanese composers. Like uh, I'm really partial to uh, the Kirby series. Yeah. It's just so like well-written music. There. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love the Kirby music too. 
Uh, what closer? Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, was there a uh, is there a favorite track that you have? A favorite uh, piece of music? Looking back at chip tunes, could be from games or uh, something that you've encountered more recently. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Can I kind of put it on the spot there? But <laughs> I would say that most people who dabble in chip music. Uh, probably look to an artist named Bitshifter. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a New York-based uh, musician who actually, uh, the whole idea of Blip Festival, uh, which I mentioned before, was uh, partly his idea. And he also manages to write some really technically like you know, awesome music. Um, he just released an album called uh, Closed System Blues, uh, which is just, just insanely well written. And using so, chip instruments, chip yeah, tunes. Yeah, he's and, still rocking yeah. the Game Boy. Yeah, really? Yeah. Is that is that his instrument of choice, is the Game Boy? Yes. Yes. Uh, and you brought a Game Boy today. We're going to play it in a second. You're going to show us uh, one of your tracks or let us hear one of your tracks, and then we're going to build some new music. Uh, but is that what you prefer, is the Game Boy, or do you like, uh, you know, are you a Game Gear aficionado, too? Are there other <laughs> instruments that you like to play on? Um, I think... Uh, part of it is that uh, the Game Boy, like this, the custom software that was developed for the Game Boy for music making, mm -hmm. is just really easy to use. It's like you would think that it's insane to, you know, operate a platform with only four to six buttons for making music. Right. Uh, but the program is so well designed that it kind of there's a really zen aspect of just sitting in your chair with the Game Boy and you know that you're just writing music and you also don't have to figure out like you know, audio uh, plug-in presets and all this other stuff and being inundated with three monitors of, of your, like, typical digital audio workstation right. setup. Right, right. Uh, there's a beautiful s simplicity to that as well. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit like um, like actual composing on a paper, on a piece of paper in a way, right? I yeah. mean, it, it, it breaks it all down to the numeric values in a, in a way, right? Mm -hmm. I would imagine I don't compose. But <laughs> did, did you start... Uh, you know, playing the music and then started to, un you know, d unravel where you could go to meet other people that were fishing out with this? Or did, were you a fan first and then you said, well, I can do some of this? Like, how did how did this all sort of come to be for you? Well, you know, a lot of the uh, online communities that existed back then made it easy to find new music by yeah. people. Uh, there used to be kind of watering holes for uh, people to, like, just publish new music. Mm -hmm. And then other folks would comment it on or rate it. And, uh, you know, these, these tracks would kind of bubble up to, like, weekly top three or top ten lists. And that made it a really easy, just made it really easy for you to, like, discover new music that was great and that everybody else liked. How many different composers of chiptune music do you think there are right now? Like, how, how many different <laughs> artists out there are making uh, music in this space? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there were actually more than 10,000 musicians, actually, because that's, that's the, like... Uh, the number that you see on the member list of some of those older communities. Yes. So there's definitely a lot of people who are, I, I don't know if they're in the public eye, but definitely there's a lot of folks who are, you know, kind of in their bedrooms or just have their own, you know, their own setup. And maybe they'll never release, you know, a song in the public, but there's, that doesn't mean that they're not still working on that kind of music. That's awesome. Okay, well, you, you started to compose and create your own music and share it with people. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing that you're active in within the community is putting on these events, and this is the third one that you're about to do, right? Overflow, or have you done Oh, a actually, it's the, uh, it's the, well, it's, it says uh, number, show number seven. Oh, okay. But it, it's kind of a programmer joke. We started with show zero, zero, zero. Okay, all right. But we're, uh, next month, we're going to be having our eighth show. It, at yeah. the eighth show, congratulations! That's Thanks. super cool. And so, tell us a little bit about um, what makes Overflow special, because it's very cool. Yeah, well, we're basically trying to follow uh, the template of some of the other uh, what we call chip shows that mm -hmm. we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. I've actually been uh, around the world uh, several times in the last like seven or eight years since that momentous occasion in uh, New York. Uh, turns out, these kinds of events are held. Uh, in a lot of other places around the world. Cool. And so a lot of uh, what I've sort of internalized is what makes it into this show. So essentially it's a show of, uh, you know, four or maybe five artists uh, brought from either locally or abroad. Mm -hmm. And we just ask them to perform their music live. And, and who are yeah. those artists? Uh, for this next one, uh, we're actually doing a game composer specific edition. Um, so we've got uh, Danny Baranowski. 
from Crypt of the Necrodancer. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we've and got uh, the, the Zelda, the Hyrule game as well. Yeah, Cadence it? of Hyrule. Cadence of Hyrule, yes. Yeah. Uh, we've also got the composer of Celeste, uh, Lena Rain. Nice. Uh, she's going to be coming in. Uh, also, a friend of ours, uh, Daniel Cannon, mm -hmm. he uh, composed the music, some of the music for Just Shapes and Beats. He's also known for uh, chiptune plus guitar. Uh, like, he, he's... He's like a total metalhead. Okay. And so he, he'll overlay his <laughs> heavy metal guitars over his Game Boy compositions. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. And then we also have uh, who I consider a local legend, uh, Noren Rad, mm -hmm. also known as Matt Creamer. Mm -hmm. uh, he composed the music for uh, Retro City Rampage. Oh, great. And the successor, uh, Shakedown Hawaii. And the music for Shakedown Hawaii is amazing. Yeah. It is so damn cool. Yeah. If you love your synth wave, yeah. like, you, you, there's lots to love. So it's not all going to be composed on Game Boys then. It's, it's going to be a nice cross section of different digital artistry out there. Yeah, normally we try and, uh, you know, showcase as many different platforms and, and backgrounds of people as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just this particular show where we're like, you know what, we should give, pay tribute to a lot of these composers because a lot of them have had chiptune scene roots. Sure. And so there's a lot of cross-pollination between all these different communities. And so we just thought we'd, uh, we'd celebrate that. That's awesome. Is there a chiptune capital of the world? Is there a place <laughs> that's kind of like the Mecca for like, you know, yeah. there's lots of great bands out of Detroit, Vancouver had yeah. some great bands for a while. Is there a place on, on earth that there just seems to be tons of them? <laughs> As a matter of fact, just two weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, was the latest edition of Square Sounds Festival. Okay. And that took place in uh, Tokyo, okay. Japan. Okay. And you can already imagine just from my mentioning Tokyo that yeah. that's already a mecca of gaming and just video game culture. Yep. And it also happens to be a place where um, I, I've got some friends uh, who who run the shows there uh, every year. It's an annual event, and chiptune artists from all over the world get featured at this show. That's and awesome. And a lot of people just go just to check the other artists That's out. Yeah, I mean, Tokyo is definitely a, a hub for art in general, right? Like, there's just a celebration of expression there. It's incredible. Yeah. I'd have to get to something like that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'll definitely be coming to Overflow, but now is the real treat of the show because you're going to play us live right now, uh, something that you've composed uh, and you crafted this whole thing by yourself, and this is your tune right here? Yeah, I wrote this uh, on my Game Boy. Mm -hmm. and, um, What's it called? Um, well, what, the tune? Yeah. Uh, it actually doesn't have a tune okay, yet. Okay. It's not released yet. Okay. But I've been playing it at live shows, and people seem to really like it. Okay, let's hear a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this is all running off the Game Boy in real time. Yeah. And are you are you improvising as you go, or is that is that yeah. all pre-edited tracks that you're queuing up? Uh, it's all pre-written, but that doesn't mean I can't improvise a little bit, right? Okay. So in fact, I can actually solo different uh, sound channels here. Okay. And right. Cool. And and I can even uh, launch different parts of the song in different orders. So okay. Means I can actually like improvise the arrangements of songs. So you could feel, if you're performing this live, you could feel the crowd and the way that they're interacting with the music yeah. and change up the beat sort of based on the, the, the rhythm and the feel of the room. Yeah, I can repeat yeah. sections. I can uh, play the chorus of like the drums, yeah. but keep the melody in the verse. Yeah. You know, do things like that. Uh, and yeah. so in a concert, you guys would crank this. Would you have a room filled with people dancing to the music and just getting right down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, you know, there's like, you can sort of tell who's uh, new at these events because they're, they're a little bit like 
flustered by yeah. wait, these people are dancing <laughs> to <Game> somebody <laughs> who's operating a Game Boy. <laughs> it's so I'm really dope, tickled dope. by that whole just that very idea. <laughs> it's <so>. amazing. <laughs> I mean that's the world we live in, which is so cool. Okay. Um, we're gonna now you're gonna play us something brand new from scratch. You're gonna show us how to do a tune on a Game Boy. That's right. Uh, but you've got an NES cartridge right there. I wanna show that too. Oh, yeah. yeah, hold that up. Now what it what is this? Yeah. Uh, well this is called a power pack and it's known okay. as this sort of like class of uh, cartridges known as flashcards. Okay. And what it basically is, is that... Uh, hold it to to, the, to oh. that, that camera? Okay. Oh, this one? Yeah, turn, turn it around. Oh, the, oh, this way. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, so basically what this cartridge is, is it allows you to run custom code on it. Okay. So the way you put custom code on it is that there is this compact flashcard okay. that uh, you can place, you know, you can put into your PC, uh, drag files onto it, and then you pop this into the cartridge, and uh, yeah, you can run the homebrew code. In which case, uh, we use it for running the Nintendo sound files. Okay. Um, that we would compose probably in an external program, mm -hmm. which you can run on your PC or Mac, by the way. So you can emulate a console, create music f that would fit within the sound chips of that console, stick it on a compact flash, and then stick it into a uh, device like this so that it would run off of the console itself. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. You can just like write music right on the on a platform that you're familiar with. Yeah, and then uh, compile code that will run directly on the hardware. Amazing, so, yeah. amazing. And I, I guess that's you know it's steps away from crafting a whole brand new game as well, right? I mean, there's lots of other complexities in there, but it's the same principles, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's so cool. Okay, uh, so you have your instrument. You have your Game Boy, and you have a camera that's going to be uh, positioned back there. Hopefully, th this is coming through somewhat clearly for you guys. But uh, Bryface is going to uh, do a, a create a song for us from scratch on his yep. Game Boy right now. Yeah. So, so tell tell us, walk us through, talk us through what you're doing. Sure. Okay. So basically, what I'm doing, um, well, first of all, uh, this software basically is almost like a director that shouts out instructions to the sound chip, right? Oh, okay. So you'll notice there are four, four columns here mm -hmm. uh, in this program. Mm -hmm. They represent the actual hardware sound channels that the Game Boy has. Okay. So essentially, I'm basically putting together little, uh, what I would call s scripts. Okay. Um, do you know what each note is going to sound like, or each chord, or do you know what, it, what these chips are going to sound like as you're um, turning them on and off like that? Yeah, well, basically what I'm doing is allocating memory. Okay. So what I'm essentially doing is just like making a, um, almost like a little bit of like space for a really quick loop. And then I'll start plotting notes inside that loop while it plays. Okay. And then we'll get a sense of what it uh So you're laying down like. like the drum beat right now. Uh, or yeah. Or some kind of bass or some kind of like the... You know, sometimes I start with the, the, the melody. Sometimes I start with, um, you know the rhythm. It depends on the song or just what I'm feeling at any day. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually plotting down notes. That's cool. And you notice I'm just like using the A button to like yeah. shift shift these notes around. <laughs> All right. So let's just do, and I can actually do things like copy and paste. Okay. There we go. Cool. And, uh, and if I play this, you can see that uh, it's just playing in this little space that I've allotted. That's so cool. And I can actually like shift all the notes, maybe a one half tone yeah. or a semitone, yeah, or a whole octave, right? So there we go. And then so you know, a lot of times I'll be starting a song and I'll just leave this running. Yeah. And maybe I'll go into this other channel that uh, specializes in things like. So this would be a whole new voice? Yeah. Okay. I'd create instruments that I can use over and over again throughout the uh, okay. the, the, the song. So I'm going to use, uh, actually, let's do this. Oop. Don't worry, it's going to get interesting in just a moment. Oh, you you got get to sort of lay out a rhythm for us. Yeah. All right. I've just started laying down some drums. So already, like, it's been Tilt two up minutes. up a bit so we can yeah. see your, your thumbs on the buttons there. There you go. So it's been two minutes. Yeah. And I already have something that 
resembles music, right? That's so cool. And um, yeah, the the composers on the Game Boy originally did it on a computer and then jammed it to the machine itself, right? They weren't. They yeah, wouldn't... the 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 tools weren't anywhere as sophisticated as they are now. Right. And you know those. Those tools that were probably like proprietary to each of the companies, yep. you, you, we would probably never have access to them. But they probably involved a lot of hoops to jump through yes. just to get it to work on these platforms. Right. And do you, do you think that they were using traditional synthesizers and, and instruments and then they had software that was compressing it to Game Boy voices? Is, is that... Yeah, I'm sure there were a lot of like, uh, you know, tools like developer tools that they needed to make this even possible. This is so cool, man. People want your Game Boy. Where did you get this very cool uh, backlit Game Boy? Oh, well, actually, the guts of this Game Boy yeah. are... It's still the Game Boy that I owned as a kid. Right on. Uh, but I've since modified it to have... Um, yeah, I've since modified it to have, like... Did you clear... modify it yourself? Yeah, I did. Yeah? It, it's actually not that hard to you know, source the parts yeah. and to unscrew things and put them back together. I guess it's a fun, so fun project, right? Yeah. But so if I've, you can make music, you can mod your Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, uh, you know, I've also installed uh, what's called a Pro Sound mod, and it's mainly for musicians who want to, um, yeah, musicians who want to, you know, they, they want to play live. Yeah. And what this does is make the sound outputs cleaner. Okay. And so this is not something that obviously Nintendo would condone necessarily. Oh, I think. <laughs> but, I uh, think that there's a uh, there's a I, I, I don't you're you're kind of celebrating the Game Boy with this. You know, you're you're yeah. you're keeping it very much alive, and I think that's a beautiful thing, right? Like these these. Uh, these are pieces of technology that, that these companies have made a lot of money from, and then they move on to the next piece of technology, but they mean something to us. And I oh, think yeah. that's Definitely. why we go to concerts of chiptune music, right? So I, I would think that you probably have a tremendous amount of fans of this kind of music and what you're doing and what other artists like you are doing at Nintendo. I think they'd be <laughs> very happy to, to see that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh so, Sorry. I, I, so we, we've got Bryface here. If you guys have any questions, maybe at home you uh, you want to compose your own stuff, uh, go ahead and read it. But uh, go ahead and write it for us. But uh, help me with reading it by doing uh, all caps if you can, right there. Uh, Doctor Game Love says my dad's girlfriend gave me hers last year and was basically barely used for decades. Looks new. That's uh, he got a, a classic Game Boy, brand new. Yeah, that's that's super cool. I have the uh, the GBA that they made look like the old NES with the old pattern. I pull that out every once in a while. I love that. That's okay. Yeah, the flip top GBA Advance, amazing. That looks like a little NES. I love that thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, there are memories I have of trying to find just the right lighting for my Game Boy and having the pixels <laughs> cast a shadow underneath that made the whole screen jump out. Yeah, you could find that sweet spot, right? And then the sun would move. Yes, I know. Uh, Blade Blur's got that GBA SP2, the NES one. Yep, I remember getting that. That was uh, that was a very happy day. I'm gonna have to I put love these it. on a little bit. Oh yeah, okay, so go for it. Uh, yeah. Sound designing a little bit. Got a question from uh, Sam I am one one one. Do you prefer specific sound chips for for particular types of sounds, percussion, bra uh, brass, etc.? Mm -hmm. Do you prefer specific sound chips for different sounds or? Um, Do you like to just yeah, be well, challenged? I'm, well, I'm partial to the Game Boy sound, mm -hmm. and it's like there's just enough cha channels for complexity, yeah. but not so many that you're going to be overwhelmed by, you know, like all the possibilities that are out there. Yeah, that that's part of the beauty of chip music as well. It's that you can just focus on creating music and not tweaking settings all day. Awesome. You know, <laughs> so. awesome. I love it. Um. Abby Jamison has the Famicom version of the Game Boy Advance SP. Game Boy getting a lot of love! Today's episode brought to you by the Game Boy. What an amazing system. It would be awesome if Nintendo brought a Game Boy mini, something like the retro little consoles, but not necessarily smaller, but not, a, not necessarily, but just a new Game Boy it would be great. All the Game Boy games on the Switch, yes, but also a standalone Game Boy that, uh, but then, 
honestly, every time they do these mini consoles, I see this every time on all of our, uh, you know, the comment sections on all our reviews for the Sega Mini and all that. People want cartridges back, man. Like, Sega would be able to, I, I feel like if they said, we've got the Genesis 2, and it'll play all of your old cartridges plus new cartridges that we're making, people will be like, yes, we want that. I mean, I guess that's what Tommy's banking on with Intellivision right now, right? He's got that whole thing. Okay. Uh, my lifestyle determines my death style, a rising tide that pushes to the other side. <laughs> Are you creating lyrics for this song? That's awesome, Tyfish. Um, can I play the eight Beethoven symphony? Can you play the, can you play Beethoven on the Game Boy? Um, oh, maybe. Uh, actually, I was watching the live stream for uh, Square Sounds Tokyo that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. There was an artist by the name of Starving Gogo. Yeah. He literally wrote like this like eight minute track that's a cover of a Beethoven song. So. That is amazing. Okay. Hey, it's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's what we're going to do for people that are staying tuned to watch EP Live. Bryface is going to be back. He's going to keep composing as we run something. Uh, but uh, for everybody that's just watching this as a clipped out segment, let's hear it for Bryface for composing and for showing us some, some, some of the skill involved in creating Game Boy music.